What's up everybody, welcome to Found Flicks. On this ending explained, we'll be looking at a movie a lot of you guys have been asking for. Oculus, involving a brother and sister whose lives have been permanently affected by the seemingly haunted mirror known as the Lasser Glass. As far as what is causing the mirror to be evil, we never find out specifically. You know, is the glass from Satan's patio furniture or whatever? Its origin and history is intentionally unknown by design. Though we do learn a lot about its characteristics and how it infiltrates its victims' minds. It focuses on harvesting negative energy. The many little ornate designs that make up the frame are representations of the souls it has consumed. All of these victims which are trapped within the mirror as spirits. It can also manipulate reality in a major way which it uses to great effect in the story, showing us both parallel flashbacks of the siblings Kaylee and Tim's encounter with the glass as children, interwoven with them reunited in the present 10 years later. The complete story of their past unraveled over the course of the film. So let's dig into Oculus, breaking down the reality bending story, looking further in depth at the Lasser glass, and explaining what happens in the quite upsetting ending. It is the climax of their childhood experiences that open the film, seeing Kaylee peeking out from a door, watching as her father carrying a gun passes by. Finding the front door lock, they spot a reflective eyed spirit standing near the mirror. As her father returns, putting the gun to her head, we hear a shot, flashing forward to Tim now, with the opening being a reoccurring nightmare he's been suffering from. And after the childhood incident, he was sent to a mental health facility where over the years, he's had his brain reprogrammed regarding the specifics of what unfolded as kids. Essentially that there was no paranormal side whatsoever. Now on the verge of his 21st birthday, birthday, Tim is finally about to be released from the hospital his treatment complete, hoping to finally move on from his childhood trauma. Though he's going to find moving on extremely difficult, as on the complete opposite end of the spectrum, his sister Kaylee has been obsessively attempting to track down the mirror for years. To her, there is no question about the validity of the mirror being supernatural. And thanks to the glass popping up at an auction house she works at, she manages to get her hands on the mirror in order to destroy whatever is contained in it once and for all. Of course, to Tim, this is majorly concerning. To him, his sister is misguided in her beliefs, which he thinks is due to her having no support system, having to deal with everything on her own all these years. Regardless, Kaylee is unwavering in her plan, begging her brother to never forget what really happened, saying she's doing it tomorrow night and asking for his help. Stepping back to 11 years earlier, we see how the Lasser Glass first entered the Russell family, purchased by their father Alan when they move into a new home, unaware of the evil he has willingly brought into the family's lives. Soon after, the mirror's effects already begin, Alan going to raid the fridge and getting a juice box, seeing a brief flash of a girl with glassy eyes, Marisol, who we see more than any of the other spirits, due to the fact that she was the glass's most recent victim, right before it came into the Russell family's possession. In the present, Kaylee follows through with her devious plan to take the mirror, and in the reflection, it appears that one of the covered statues behind her moves on its own. But when she checks it out, they are all statues, which shouldn't, you know, normally be able to move. That's because one of the main abilities of the mirror is to bend reality, and as it harvests more energy, its effects grow more powerful, these manifestations spreading outside of the mirror as well. One method it gains this energy is from plants, sucking the life out of them, seen in the past happening to their mom Marie's prized ferns. While Alan, who has spent the most time with the glass, is starting to become essentially possessed by it the longer he is in its presence, hearing overlapping whispering voices emanating from the mirror. Later he's spotted by Kaylee in his office with a mysterious woman, Marisol again. So technically not a real woman, but this supposed affair is what will end up tearing the family and Marie's sanity apart, unable to ever find out what's truly going on with her husband. After more urging from his sister, Tim does decide to join Kaylee, meeting at their old house. And what an ideal place to bring the mirror, so they can relive all the tragic memories they have in the house. Great idea! Fresh out of the hospital where you spent a decade trying to get over this shit. How about we bring all that stuff to the surface immediately? Sound good, bro? Kaylee at least seems to be very well organized and put an absurd amount of thought and research into her plan, taking into account every aspect of the mirror's abilities, setting up several cameras to document everything, control over electronic devices, including her cell phone, multiple alarms, scheduled tied to eating, drinking water, and changing the tapes. And finally, some weights on the ceiling attached to a sharp pointed object aimed at the mirror, which she refers to as the kill switch. This also has a timer attached, which if not reset every 30 minutes will cause the device to release, 
and smash the mirror. Kaylee then going into the history of the many hands the mirror has passed through over hundreds of years. Its trail of death, starting in 1754, where a man Lasser, who the mirror became named after, hung the mirror over his fireplace, only to mysteriously die soon after. Then moving on to other victims, including a fat-ass railroad tycoon who somehow lost hundreds of pounds in a short period before falling to his death, or a woman who died in a bathtub of dehydration after three days, which is of course odd considering she was surrounded by water. Even if these deaths are a bit out of the ordinary, the mirror's victims are always found without any evidence to suggest anything supernatural, but their fates are the mirror's doing. It's just one smart mirror. This explains why she set up the specific timers related to rehydrating and eating. As the mirror bends reality further, time itself becomes incomprehensible to those in the radius of its effect. So the timers will hopefully keep them on track to not lose a bunch of weight or die of dehydration like those before. But already the mirror is up to its tricks their childhood family dog passing by inexplicably. Clearly the glass remembers the kids and the huge trauma they suffered here at the house, which it sees as an opportunity to exploit. Kaylee then goes on to discuss their own family's experience with the mirror, that within two weeks of its arrival that Marie went insane and was murdered by her husband, who was then killed by his own son in front of their daughter, revealing the end result of the past and opening sequence, which is pretty brutal. Though Tim still doesn't believe that the mirror is responsible, considering that she made up this scary story to deal with the fact that their father was a murderer and a cheater. He then asks, why don't we just end it by smashing the mirror? But Kaylee scolds him, upset, saying he obviously doesn't remember. Because whatever evil inhabits this mirror is one smart cookie and can protect itself from destruction by bending reality once again to defend itself. And when Tim tries himself, going for it with a stool, he puts down the stool, talking further with Kaylee. The mirror has distracted him from his original intent. Possibly the mirror's most prevalent ability is is what happens when you stare into the mirror. By doing this, it can control someone's actions or influence them, as mentioned previously with Alan. And as the mirror's power grows, absorbing more negative energy, so does its influence over him. Typing away on his computer, he goes to his bandaged finger, bloodied from biting his nail, removing the band-aid. But suddenly, it appears that the band-aid was not taken off. So Alan desperately goes for a staple remover, digging into what looks like the bandage, but it is in reality his nail. Yo, that mirror is messed up. We see that to Alan, reality has changed to a greater degree than before. And even after this, several looped whispering voices call out repeatedly to Alan that it doesn't hurt. As we see, through the mirror's influence, Alan is not really in control of reality, or honestly his own actions at this point. And from here, he continues his descent into darkness, purchasing a gun to Marie's annoyance, even though he assures her it's for the family's safety. As she walks away, he calls out that she's a grotesque cow, though when asking him to repeat what he said, Alan responds he said nothing. Now the mirror is sinking its hooks into Marie, and more than likely it wasn't Alan that made the grotesque cow remark but the voices in the glass, preying on Marie's insecurities about her husband having an affair. It's a ghost woman, so I don't think that technically counts. Hard to say. But Marie has no reason to suspect anything supernatural. And the movie doesn't ever make clear if he was having an affair or not outside of this one ghostly glimpse. So it's certainly a possibility that he was, as his behavior was already suspicious before the evil mirror started bossing him around. And he only becomes more suspect after. Marie hearing a woman's voice with him in the office or randomly heading off to a super important golf meeting with a client. Golf! Sure, you're playing golf. Yeah, I bet. Hole in one, buddy. Even if no one else has figured out what's up yet, the family dog Mason knows that something in Alan's office is no good, going increasingly berserk. Marie begrudgingly lets him in, and when the doors closed, somehow they became locked. Unfortunately for Mason, another way the glass takes energy is apparently from adorable little animals, as after this, the dog is never seen again. But in the present, to Tim, this couldn't have been what happened, because what's more likely? She's not remembering correctly correctly or a mirror ate their dog. I do like that Tim acts as a dissenting view to everything, and the idea of things being unprovable is one of the mirror's most important elements. But the first strange signs occur in the house soon after, discovering their two cameras strangely pointed lens to lens, along with the plant set around the area now decayed and dead. When reviewing the tapes, they see the two of them having the same argument as moments ago, but this time the two grab the cameras and place them into the position seen. Tim quickly loses it after seeing this, because 
because how can his psych mumbo jumbo explain this one? Wanting to call his doctor. But Kaylee warns that the mirror has an approximate 30 foot radius of effect. So even when it looks like Tim goes outside to call his doctor, he suddenly finds himself back inside. And according to Kaylee, he never actually went outside saying she watched him walk over to the corner and sit down. Already their handle on reality is compromised because they can't trust anything they witness. And several of Kaylee's well-laid protocols are already undone. In 2002, the supposed affair has now completely taken over Marie's thoughts, seeing her chugging red wine while the kids dine on burnt grilled cheese. Marie decides to investigate the off-limits office for herself, looking at documents sitting on Alan's desk, seeing a page with the name Marisol written, flipping to another with her name scrawled everywhere there. Oh, well that's concerning. Thinking this is irrefutable proof of her husband's infidelity, Marie yells, knocking everything off the desk, stopping and getting emotional when picking up a picture of the family. The glass of the frame shattered. How's that for being symbolic? The lesser glass is shattering the family. Symbols! Angrily, she throws the picture at the mirror, but it misses. The mirror bending what happens to again protect itself from damage. And it responds to the attack a force pulling Marie towards it, seeing a much more calm and creepy version of herself in the reflection on the other side. The whispering voices increase in volume and intensity as the mirror Marie undoes her shirt, revealing her stomach scar from giving birth opened up. Gross! The kids find her, still staring into the mirror, but Marie has already been changed turning and strangling her son. They manage to escape locking themselves in a room with mom unhinged, violently slamming her hands on the door outside. Fortunately, kind of I guess, Alan comes home distracting her from the kids and he is forced to put her in a sleeper hold to render her unconscious. So she's completely lost it, if that wasn't abundantly clear. However, Alan hasn't been exactly acting like himself lately either. To be fair, some part of him still cares for a moment as he at least tries to call a doctor to get her help. But the voices whisper out to him that everything is fine which he accepts, hanging up the phone. When Alan discusses things with the kids, he only offers to them that their mother is sick and doesn't want to be bothered. And that phone call must have been the final gasp of Alan's humanity, as he tells them that they can hang out in his always previously forbidden office and play video games. The kid's confused by his change of heart. Well, before he was trying to keep the mirror and what it was doing to him a secret, but now he is trying to get his kids to be around the mirror so they can potentially suffer the same fate as himself. The timelines start becoming even more fluid and now bleeding into each other with things in the present triggering specific memories. Tim changes out a light bulb, triggering Kaylee to remember finding him staring into the mirror. Then in the present, seeing her dad ascending the stairs with a plate of food, the younger Kaylee asking if it's for mom. The bulb burns out again and Tim has vanished. Kaylee munching on an apple goes to fix it herself, only for it to quickly burn out again. One more try and it seems to work this time, going back for her apple. Oh, watch out for that light bulb right there. Hate for you to accidentally take a bite of, oh. And it's a nice mouthful of broken light bulb she gets instead of the apple. Psych! Blood in her mouth along with a huge shard of glass jammed inside. Tim reappears and it turns out it wasn't the bulb, but the apple she took a bite of. Ooh, double psych! The kids are growing hungry as there is no food in the house since those under the Lasser's influence stop eating and drinking. And with still no signs of their mom, they decide to bravely go and enter their parents' bedroom. And their mother is found, chained to the wall like a dog with a mutilated mouth and looking pretty deranged. Of course, when confronting their dad about this, he's just annoyed they didn't obey him and grounds them. They then try to call multiple doctors themselves to get Marie help, but the mirror is controlling the phone. So it looks like it's gonna be up to the kids to deal with this thing all on their own. In the present, time and reality continue to get screwy Kaylee coming too, as the kill switch timer was about to go off. She makes it in time, resetting it, but if she hadn't moved before it went off, the device would most certainly have killed her. Meanwhile, upstairs, Tim enters his old bedroom, his younger self seeing him before the older one disappears. Which is also funny because this actor also played young Josh in Insidious 2, making this two movies where he interacts with his older self. Little weird trivia for you. The house having lost electricity as Kaylee predicted, she goes through the rooms, activating floor lamps, kicking over one of the dead plants shattering the pot. And when turning one of the lamps on, finds she is at the wall where her mother had been held prisoner. Later downstairs, finding what looked like the broken plate pieces on the floor. But when she films the area, according to the camera, none of it is actually there. Another trick of the blasted mirror. She turns around, surprised to see a ghostly version of her mom standing there, reactively stabbing her in the neck with a piece of the plate. But it wasn't her mom she stabbed. It was actually her fiance, Michael. Ooh, that's unfortunate. Or perhaps it's just yet another double psych. And to prove how little control she really has here, at that moment, Kaylee gets a call from Michael. 
Just check it in. And plus, she couldn't have stabbed him with the ghost plate because it wasn't actually there, right? But there was the very real potted plant she broke. And it was a shard of this that she actually had in her hand and used on Michael. So yeah, she killed him for real. The impact of what she's done painfully dawning on her. Tim drags her outside and makes a call to 911. His plan to simply wait outside until that 30 minute kill switch timer goes off and destroys the mirror. But it won't be that easy. The electricity in the house blazes back to life. Seeing inside, Tim open the curtain and join his sister standing right in front of the mirror. Dang, curse that crafty mirror. Now what are they gonna do? Because if they are actually inside as it appears, they'll be killed when the timer goes off. Back in the past, things reach ahead as Alan chills in front of the mirror for a while before grabbing the gun from his desk, Tim getting a peek as he loads it. After reporting this to his sister, she decides it's time to try and smash the mirror. And Marisol appears telling them in their father's voice she told them not to play in here, sending the kids off in a hurry. Upstairs, dad enters the bedroom, Marie crawling right up to his face, putting the gun to her chin he instead lets her loose. Present Kaylee is scared, asking to wait until he's gone, opening the door to see Marie standing there. The kids count to three and run towards downstairs, Kaylee slowing her mom down with the swing of the golf club to her face, then making it out of the upstairs window, leaping to safety. But there's no sign of Tim, seeing two of the glasses victims standing in the mirror watching out. Inside, older Tim has an encounter with his father, asking if he's going to arrest him before firing, the shot sending both Kayleys back inside, then finding the younger Tim mouthing for her to hide, blipping back to the past, and Marie springs forth, choking her, not letting go as Kaylee gets weaker, but she pauses, suddenly realizing what she's doing, uttering her daughter's name sadly. But this breakthrough moment is truncated when a shot rings out from Alan, blasting her in the chest. The kids run off, seeing several other victims hearing their collective whisperings controlling their father. Both Kayleys find themselves reliving this harrowing moment while hiding from the beginning of the film before returning to her younger self. They try to again smash the mirror, but their swings land right outside of the mirror despite what it initially looks like, the mirror protecting itself as usual. Alan struts in, pointing the gun at Kaylee, creepily saying, this is me, I've seen the devil and he is me, looking in the mirror, seeing him with reflective eyes. His voice joined with a chorus of the other voices from within. Tim knocks the gun away, getting a hold of it as Alan attacks Kaylee, Tim demanding he let her go. Surprisingly, he relents, getting down on his knees, putting his finger alongside his sons on the trigger, telling them to run and pulling it. The shot's impact blowing him back, causing a small break in the corner of the glass. Other mirror victims led by Marisol all shuffle into the room, opening their mouths, the sounds of a timer going off coming from within. Tim finds himself alone, sitting in front of the mirror, the timer is still buzzing, calling out to his sister, who is back in the office, seeing in the reflection of the mirror her mom appearing normal, reaching out from the other side and hugging her. Tim hits the kill switch, sending the weighted spike down, hearing a wet, thudding on impact. On the screen, seeing nothing at first, but it in fact stabbed through Kaylee, who was there seen hugging her mom, even if it was the younger version of her. They were able to survive the mirror as children be because children don't have as much trauma or insecurity as their parents. But now as an adult, she has been consumed by loss, her entire purpose for coming here in the first place, which is also why now the mirror is able to lure Kaylee to the mirror. In the end, it was this childhood trauma that destroyed her. Then remembering as kids, Kaylee tells Tim they have to make this right when they're older, that they have to kill the thing for mom and dad. Younger Tim promising to do so. As Kaylee dies, her movement ceasing, then seeing the simultaneous aftermath in 2002 and in the present at once. The kids talking to the cops while a body is rolled out, older Tim watching it pass by in handcuffs, overhearing two officers discussing the case. That he called it in and then did this seeing footage of Kaylee being killed by the anchor. Interestingly, with all this weird time and reality bending going on, one of the events seen did occur. That one moment where he called 911 outside did happen which is what brought the authorities here now. Younger Tim is dragged out, Kaylee shouting to her brother as he is taken away to never forget his promise. Inside, seeing Marie and Alan, along with Kaylee, all with reflective eyes, as both Tims are driven away, respectively incarcerated and sent to the hospital, tragically concluding both timelines. Well, bummer, that is not a happy ending. First of all, Tim did forget his promise to Kaylee, to never forget what really happened, having this systematically removed from his head at the hospital. Though the reality of what they experienced was obviously a lot for Tim to handle, especially having a hand in killing his father. The end result being that he grew to believe that none of it actually happened the way it did, only realizing now his mistake. But the damage has already been done. His sister is dead, 
and he's blamed for the murder. An almost exact replica of what happened a decade ago. Just as in 2002, and with the mirror's other various victims, there is no actual evidence left behind of any supernatural involvement in these cases. To the police, it's an open and shut case that the already troubled Tim was responsible for another death. Thusly, the mirror basically wins in the end, which they really didn't seem to stand a chance against, even with Kaylee's multitude of plans and research, especially once reality started bending out of their control. They were pretty much screwed, allowing the evil to continue onwards to another place and feasting on the energy of new victims. Honestly, there isn't much Tim could have done differently, other than of course resetting the timer, but he had no idea that his sister was there, since he couldn't actually see her and the monitors even appeared blank. And I have to say that Kaylee is as much at fault for her fate as well. They were lucky as kids to even survive and should have never sought out the mirror again. But the idea of justice for her parents' deaths and the inability to move on from this is what drives Kaylee back to the mirror. It's clear that it's because of this she couldn't simply leave the past behind. It had no choice but to try and defeat the evil. Too bad the mirror is so dadgum tricky that it outsmarted them in the end. Okay guys, that'll do it for our reality bending adventure with the Lasser Glass and Oculus. I gotta say I quite like this movie and it feels quite creative playing with its premise in a lot of interesting ways, giving the audience some pretty major surprises and shocking moments as well. What did you guys think of Oculus and its ending? What do you think will happen with the mirror next? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to send me suggestions on any other movies or TV shows you'd like to see me explain. Make sure to like, subscribe, and follow. Thanks for watching Found Flicks. See you next time.